welcome. Let's get started. We'll begin with an AP projection of the foot. Get good visualization of most of the bones of the foot here. However, those most proximal parcels have some overlapping of the tibia and fibula. The digits are numbered first through fifth, starting with the great toe. Notice the great toe has only two phalanxes, whereas the second through fifth have three each, combining for a total of 26 bones in the foot. Second through fifth toe have three phalanx described by their position, whereas the first has only two, again, described by position. Tarsals of the foot include three cuneiforms described for their position across the foot, as well as the navicular, the cuboid, and again, the talus and calcaneus, not well visualized on an AP film. Joints of the foot include distal and proximal interphalangeal joint spaces for the second through fifth digits, as well as metatarsal phalangeal and tarsal metatarsal joints. Recognize that the first digit has only one interphalangeal joint space. Other radiographically pertinent anatomy for the foot includes the presence of sesamoid bones and the tuberosity of the fifth metatarsal. The central ray for an AP foot x-ray is directed at the base of the third metatarsal. In this lateral view of the foot, we are able to have some assessment of the joints of the phalanges. However, they are superimposed on top of one another. We do have good visualization of the tarsal metatarsal joint spaces and good views of all of the tarsals. The tarsals are seen in profile, including the medial cuneiform, the navicular, and the talus and calcaneus, two of which were not well visualized on the AP X-ray. Lateral film, we're also able to see the metatarsal in profile and this interesting bone spur on the calcaneus. In the oblique view, we're able to see nice open joint spaces. Do you notice anything strange on this x-ray? Anything at all? How about all of these open growth plates? We can tell from the growth plates that this is a pediatric or adolescent patient. Oblique views of the foot also provide us with an excellent view of the sinus tarsi and the tuberosity of the fifth metatarsal in profile. AP ankle x-ray shows the major bones of the ankle including the fibula, tibia, and talus. The ankle has a lateral and medial malleolus. Notice that the lateral is slightly inferior. The tibial plafond is the articulating surface of the distal tibia. Lateral views of the ankle provide us with a profile of the talus and the talar dome, where it articulates with the tibia. General anatomy of the lower leg includes our talus, tibia, fibula, and femur. And as we saw our malleolus at the distal end, we have condyles at the proximal end of our tibia. Also visible are the proximal and distal tibiofibular joints. Lateral views of the lower leg show the major bones, tibia and fibula, in profile. It is important to understand that the tibial plateau is angled at 10 to 20 degrees. General anatomy visible on an AP knee x-ray include those of the tibia, fibula, femur, and patella. And as we saw that our tibia has condyles, so too does our femur, these being pillars for the articulating surfaces of the knee. We use the readily palpable 
epicondyles as positioning landmarks. Other pertinent anatomy include the intercondyloid eminence and the intercondylar fossa. Lateral views of the knee show the condyles of the femur in profile, as well as our angled tibial plateau, and great views of the proximal tibiofibular joint. Thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.